This monumental painting by Miro, painted on the first day of spring in 1945 in Barcelona, has an overwhelming impact. There's something about the brightness of this picture. It's capricious, it's seemingly joyful. Everything is represented in the sort of ideographic style that Miro had developed during the mid-1920s when he first went to Paris. The protagonist, the woman, is identified not just by the eyes, but also by the large vulva. The title of the picture is Femme dans la nuit, Woman in the Night. It becomes necessary to wonder why he decided to make a night painting that was white. Miro, as a, as a young man, was enormously interested in the poetry of Dante, which leads one to wonder whether here we aren't looking at the kind of whiteness that pervades the final volume of the Divine Comedy, where at every step things get whiter, or whether this is the woman clothed in the sun who appears in the darkness of the apocalypse. She is a deity. She is a pagan goddess and force. And the world that she lives with is shattered in a kind of powerful whiteness, which he repeats in all 14 works of the series. There's a star in the sky, but it's a black star. Here in the lower right is a strange ideograph that looks a little bit like a, an inchworm but which is equally the silhouette of a mountain range. In one of the notebooks, he drew this exact configuration and noted that it was to represent the scream of a swallow. The painted background is atmospheric in the way that he has applied the white across the canvas in washes to create one of his hallmark fields. It's not real space, it's spiritual space. Miro said that he wanted an art that was a constant spiritual vibration. Part of the achievement here is how much he's expressing with such graphic restraint. You realize that every element throbs with a special meaning for the vast human message that he is trying to convey about tragedy. He wanted to make a statement that went beyond Picasso. He's trying to find a way that was more effective than Guernica. Miro wants to avoid theatricality altogether. He wants magic. He wants music, clarity, poetry. The most impressive and profound of his war works He'd been able to ship out of Portugal to New York, and they were put on display at the Pierre Matisse Gallery in January of 1945. These are the so-called constellations. It's on Miro's mind that his own work and experiences as an artist during the war represent a, a body of work that has more than just artistic importance. It has a human importance. It's a kind of release from the situation that he had found himself, having escaped from France because the German army had invaded. He thought that under Franco, as an artist, all he would be able to do would be to draw his images on the sand to be washed away. But if he did anything else, you know, more permanent, it would place him and his family in jeopardy. The musical notes are bombs. What one's looking at are not monkeys and birds, but are the horrifying bombers that are being sent by the Allied to obliterate German and Japanese cities almost every week. The last painting in this series was done on the day of the unconditional surrender of the German armies. These works taken as a whole represent his Guernica. The world is in darkness and he, the artist, is shining a light on it with this graphic poem. 
And it's concepts of those sorts that give the visual power, finally, to this great series of works from the beginning of 1945.